How's, how's business? Good morning, David. Uh, well, you know, it's a, a China is entering into a transition time uh, between the pandemic control policies. Certainly, as a vaccine company, they keep us busy. Uh, as we all know, vaccine is the best uh, 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 the tools to fight against the COVID-19. Okay, well, how many, I'd like to ask you then about the inhaled vaccines. A few yeah. weeks ago, I believe, and correct me if I'm getting this wrong, you're working with 13, one, three local governments to help roll out the vaccines. Uh, how many doses of the inhaled vaccine have been given out so far? Uh, in fact, uh, our inhaled uh, Covidesia Air, which is the train name, has been uh, rolled out uh, whole countrywide. And uh, you probably have seen this report from different uh, uh, provinces or, or municipalities that they're setting up the, uh, you know, the immunization uh, stations and, uh, uh, you know, to uh, schedule people to come to uh, vac take vaccines. And uh, up to now, uh, I would say we have over uh, 2 million doses distributed. I'm sure there are more than a million doses uh, being used. And uh, we certainly have seen there, uh, there's some, uh, you know, a high demand from everywhere. And we're working with uh, this, uh, the, this the CDC, try to roll out as many as we can, uh, to set up as many uh, vaccination stations as we can. How many then do you think you will roll out in the future? So one million you think have been given out to people, two million have been actually put out there, maybe in storage or somewhere. So looking at the next few months, how many do you think you'll be able to roll out? Well, I mean, this number is only based on current, uh, you know, the first uh, booster dose. Uh, I think, uh, you know, definitely the second booster dose is needed. And with the, you know, the time goes on and uh, when there is, a, you know, an implementation of the second booster dose, I would expect more a vaccine will be uh, rolled out. Uh, of course, there are more uh, kind of vaccines that uh, will be available uh, countrywide. But certainly, inhaled vaccine uh, has its advantages because it doesn't really have any, uh, it, you know, the it's, it's painless, it's needless, it's really fun to take the vaccine. And it's also provide the triple protection, as we know, the antibody we call the humoral uh, protection, and we also in, uh, induce the cell mediated immune uh, response. And adding on those two layers, we have the mucosal immune response. That is the way to protect, you know, uh, from a, a viral transmission. So uh, I hope with the inhaled vaccine, uh, really the mucosal immunity will provide people the protection that uh, will slow down the transmission and eventually end the pandemic. Yeah, Dr. Yu, I was wondering if you could give us, even if it's an estimate, a, a number on, on what you, on how many you expect to roll out in terms of that inhaled vaccine. I know things are moving and it's, it's very, very fluid, but what's, what are you planning around? Well, we certainly pro have the capacity and provide uh, worldwide for billions of doses. As you know, our, uh, you know, uh, injectable vaccine and the uh, inhaled vaccine, uh, in fact, are the same one. You, you make this, you know, it's really composition are the same, but we're uh, using only 20% of the injectable dose. So with our current capacity, we can produce easily uh, like a uh, half billion dose of uh, uh, injectables. So if we, uh, if you type a five, that means uh, we can provide over a billion doses annually. So it's, it's, a, it's a capacity wise, we have a lot. It really is depends on uh, uh, what's the policy or what would be the second uh, booster dose, who will going to take it. Right, Do Doctor, I'm wondering if you could tell us what is cheaper to produce, the inhaled dose? Or, or, or the injectable dose, and w what do you think is also easier to roll up logistically? Well, logistically, uh, I would say, you know, uh, people certainly know the traditional way of vaccination by, you know, take uh, an inject injection. However, the right. inhaled ones uh, is much easier to, for people uh, to take it 
because it's so uh, easy, just like uh, we drink a coffee, right? It's just a sip in uh, or, or the bubble tea. And it's very easy and actually it's fun and it's painless. And I think the older uh, experience or feedbacks from the field, people really love it. And it's only, it, it also has a lower dose. It certainly is much safer in terms of a, a safety profile. Well, I, mean the, the, I mean, it's a safe vaccine anyways. It's just a less uh, kind of, a, you know, adverse event or, or, or uncomfortable feeling. I think that's uh, something we uh, were uh, expecting. Certainly the inhaled ones uh, will have the advantage. Of course, I mean, people uh, take different uh, way of vaccination and the, the vaccine provider will have to be trained how to take this vaccine. And uh, also people who take the one uh, need to understand how to breathe in. Yes, I mean, I think that's the first time I've heard anyone describe taking a vaccine as a sip, sip, sipping bubble tea. But I guess that goes into the, the messaging, particularly among the elderly. How does China and how do officials convince the elderly uh, to take this? As part of the industry, and you're very central to this rollout, really, uh, what, do you, what suggestion would you give officials, uh, recommendations you would give officials here to convince the elderly part of the population to take the vaccines? You know, for our uh, vaccine, we have done the clinical trials uh, from uh, uh, 18 above. And in fact, we also done the trials uh, for the 6 to 17 years old. And we find the elderly, uh, the vaccine is very uh, effective, you know, boost their immune response. And also uh, uh, much safer for elderly, you know, uh, to go out, not to uh, roll up their sleeves and, and, you know, even take off the clothes. It is much uh, easier for them uh, and comfortable to uh, avoid, you, you know, especially in the North China now it's a very cold weather. I think it's a very, uh, you know, a convenient for the elderly to go out and just to take a sip and uh, you vaccinate it. Uh, certainly, uh, we mm. see the benefit, we see the, uh, the, the, the effectiveness, we also see the convenience of the vaccine. And uh, uh, certainly we would be expecting you know, the elderly will come out and, and take the vaccine to protect themselves because now you can see, uh, you know, the, the virus is everywhere in China. Understood. Um, I can't let you go without asking you about financial performance. I mean, the last two years, 2021 had been, was extremely good. 2022, things moderated slightly. In fact, I believe you, you, uh, you went from profits. I think you're turning in quarterly losses. Your free cash flow also turned negative. What does 2023 look like to you as far as financial performance? We, we certainly hope it will turn around again, you know, to be profitable. Uh, however, it, was, it really depends on the situation, how quickly we can roll out, how many people would take up, uh, you know, uh, our COVID, uh, COVID air. And certainly we have added on another vaccines for our Mahasia, which is a quadrivalent meningococcal conjugate vaccine. Uh, you know, in our pipeline, uh, that one uh, actually uh, rollout is quite, uh, I would say, quite uh, impressive. And even in this con uh, current, uh, you know, pandemic control environment, uh, many of the people who have been uh, locked down will not be able to go out. But we still see the, the market is growing. So, so certainly we'll hope, uh, you know, with both uh, Covidacia air, Covidacia injectables and the uh, our meningococcal conjugate vaccine was certainly, uh, you know, providing sufficient financial returns for the company.